everyone, it's Nona Grace and it's early part of the day. I decided I would start this video early. While I'm rested, I really slept well. I went to bed at 8.30 last night and I got up about 7.30 this morning. I slept all the way through. I was so tired. I guess a couple nights staying up late is not good for me. The um, One night I stayed up late because of the wedding. The next night I stayed up late because I was watching a live stream and I went to bed kind of on the late side. Even though I did get up a little late on Sunday morning, I was still not as rested as I should be. Well, today I was watching some videos and I answered my comments and I didn't go to the gym because I didn't feel like it. Um, but I was watching Ride On 2, Chappie. You know, he's got a really good um, channel. He's a motorcycle rider, and he does um, different vlogs on his bike. Well, today I was watching the five things that annoy, it's his title, I'm going to read it as it is. The five, five things that annoy me about riding a motorcycle. Well, you know, my husband thinks that I should ride mine more often. And I tell him, there are things that are so much easier by just getting into my car. I don't have to do a security check like you would, well, you're supposed to, like Chappie says, you're supposed to check your car. You should be checking your lights and everything, make sure everything's going to go good. But if it just starts, it starts and off we go. Whereas on the bike, you might check your lights and you might check other things, um, like he said, his chain, um, and just to make sure. And actually, my husband does the checking of my bike. I just get on it and go when I'm going to go. Um, what I didn't like was, um, I liked, I just liked a lot of the things he said too, and I don't like to leave my helmet out when I go on the, on the bike with my husband. He's got a nice trunk and it fits both our helmets in there. Mine, it, I think it fits my helmet. I don't remember because I've always just carried it in with me when I went to work with the bike. I would just carry it in and put it into the classroom. But I would put my jacket and things in the trunk, so I don't think my helmet fit. So I would have to carry my helmet if I went into a store. And it's true, if your helmet gets stolen in the state that we live in, you can't ride your bike. Some states you don't need a helmet, so it probably wouldn't matter. But in New York, you have to wear a helmet to ride on your bike. That was one thing that I really that he listed. He listed a bunch of things. The one that he didn't mention that I find it a problem, my husband doesn't find it a problem, is it messes my hair up. Every time I get off the bike and you take the helmet off, your hair is, like I have a little bit of natural curl and my hair is all of a sudden kind of straight because of the helmet makes your hair straighter. So then I bring a squirt bottle and I spritz it and I fluff it and I hope the curl comes back because then I feel like I look like me. Otherwise, I don't feel like my hair looks very good on me. Um, and I don't like shifting into second gear. Why? My, you know, he says maybe he should give me the heel toe pedal because it's easier to shift but I don't ride often enough for him to, to spend the money to, to do that. My foot is short, and if you've got a longer foot, I'm sure it's easier to shift by pulling. You have to pull up on the little peg, and it hurts my foot when I pull up front to go to second gear. Third and fourth are okay, and I, I go up four times. I think it's four. I don't even know how many. I just click and click and click until I can't click anymore. That goes to show I don't ride very often. And um, I think that was it. And then the placing of place of your helmet. I don't have a place to put my helmet. Were the things that I did. And what I wanted to know what annoys you. Now, these are a few things that annoy me. I don't like it when people slurp their soup or their coffee. It's 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 annoying. It might, you know, you're allowed, like, I think, two slurps and then after that you're being disrespectful to the cup of coffee in the meal or whatever I don't know it's not a, you're allowed I think two slurps and then you should be done no more slurping and I don't like it when people lay on the table with their one arm if they're right-handed they lay there with their left arm on the table 
and they just kind of hang over their dish and their head is hanging over their dish and they're just shoveling in the food. I kind of don't like that either. And so when my kids would come, we all te we teach them to keep their one hand in their lap. If you need your second hand there, it's your wrist that rests on the table, not your whole arm. And if you're left-handed, you'd learn to keep your, your elbow close to your body. You don't sprawl out on the table because the person next to you might be a right-handed person. And your arm will be interfering with their eating. And so the right-hand person needs to keep their elbow close to them. And the left-handed person needs to keep their elbow close to them. them. Or if you're left-handed, just learn to sit at the end of the table. That makes it convenient for you. And choose your spot well. And I guess that's it for now. We'll come in later when Jim is home. He's at work, in case you were wondering. where Where is he? He's at work. Today is Monday, and um, he had to go to work. I, I'm so glad I don't have to. I was reading Jackie's comment to uh, the Motorcycle Mama. And Monday comes, and I'm, I used to dread Mondays. I don't dread Mondays anymore because Monday is like every other day. The only day that it seems like it's like, oh my goodness, it came back already was Saturday because Saturday is when I go to church. I could go Sunday morning, but I don't like getting up. But in October, I start the religious ed starts for the kids. And so the first Sunday of every month, I will have to go to the early Mass because right after Mass is... Um, the, the religious class and I'm teaching I think I'm teaching fourth grade I don't even know what grade I'm teaching they haven't given me the book yet but I do know I'm going to be teaching my one granddaughter who is going to be making her first communion and she's in third grade so I will be teaching a third grader and possibly fourth grade too I'm not sure but I know I'm doing the third for um, Paige. Paige will be making her first communion and so I'll have to teach her the things she needs to know for that. And it's funny because when I made my first communion, I made it in second grade. We had to learn a lot of prayers and we made our first confession in second grade and we made our first communion in second grade. Whereas now second grade is first confession and third grade is first communion. So that's what I'll be doing. Well, I'll check in with you in a little while to see how you're doing, how's your day going, and I will let you know how my day is going. So I'll see you in just a bit. Take care, and I'll see you then. I don't know how to end this because I usually tell you goodbye, but I'm not going to tell you goodbye yet. So stick around, and there's more to come. I'm back. Did you have a good day? I had a very quiet day. It's a good thing I did the video in the morning part because Right now, it feels like I have nothing to talk about, but I've already done my little chat with you. Now, um, the kids are going to, I do have something to tell you. The kids in the school, the ninth graders, they're looking for a place to um, build their float. So yesterday, my daughter called, the one that you met, Jessica. She called to see if they could use our trailer barn. Well, the trailer barn would work, but there's no electricity in there, so it would be very dark. They'd have to use extension cords, and then they'd have to find lights. So my husband offered that they could use the middle bay of the big barn that does have lights. So that means he's got to put the trailer away, move the other trailer, move his Jeep, pull the truck out, back the trailer into the trailer barn, move all the motorcycles, so that he can give them the middle bay. It's a lot of extra stuff, but he offered. <laughs> after he did, I don't think he realized how much work he had to do until after he said he'd do it. And so they were going to look for a different spot, but since he said he would, they could use our barn, they're gonna come here to build their float. And the float building is supposed to be starting about two weeks before the actual parade. And it's odd that they're having their parade on a Tuesday, which is very odd. Usually the parade is just before the homecoming game, I thought, or at least that Maybe weekend. homecoming is on Tuesday. I don't know when homecoming is, but um, that's when the parade is going to be. It's going to be on a Tuesday. So this float will be in our barn when they start for almost two weeks. They haven't started yet. 
they don't realize, I don't think the kids realize how hard it is to build a float. We built a float years ago. Actually, a couple times we had to build a float. Every time our daughters were teen queens, we had to build a float. Three times, I think we did it. Three times, yeah, we did it three times. That's right, because one ran twice. Oh, gee. It was a lot of work. And you have to come up with an idea. They give you a theme, and then you have to come up with the idea. Well, my phone's ringing again. I wonder who's calling this time. We'll find out. Hello? It's National Grid telling us that we're in, since we pay our bills on time, you can get your phone, your, your electric bill cheaper. Well, we have Village Electric, which is about as cheap as you're going to get. A lot of people have National Grid, I think it's called, which is an expensive electricity. But our village buys the electricity and then sells it back to us. And I happen to be in that, even though I'm out of the village, I still have the village electric. It goes just one more house past us. And then we have also village water, which goes um, about maybe a mile past us. And then that's it, then nobody has that water, the village water. And we had to pay extra for that line to go through. And it's a good thing we have the village water because our well would always go dry and that would have not been good so we always have enough water i was ending the video but then i remembered i don't think i oops i just kicked the camera again i don't think i finished my story about the floats and we had built three and it was really quite hard to build them because they give you a theme and then you have to um, follow the theme and try to you try to win our float actually won we we actually did pretty good with our floats. And um, we had two days to build, too. And we built it only in two days, where a lot of them, if they're in the area, they can build it sooner. We used our pickup truck as our float thing because it was too far to bring a trailer. And one of them would have been in Canada, which was too hard to build there. Another one was in um, Colorado. I think we built a float. Um. Did we build one? Center of, yeah, uh, we, State yeah. College, PA. State College, PA, yeah. We, and, we had, and I don't know, we built three of them though. And they're so far away that you can't bring a trailer. So we use our pickup truck that hauls our camper as our um, float. And the one year it was, we did the um, Snow White was. Um, that was a PA. Uh, in, that one was good because my actually all my kids and my one granddaughter was on the float as characters. We had live characters. Ryan was there too. And Ryan was there, yeah. Ryan, Jessica, Laura, Emily, and Abigail were all on the float and we played they played um, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. I had made dwarfs out of um, corrugated plastic and dressed them with clothes. And Abby was one of the dwarfs, and she wanted to be, would you believe, this is the one she wanted to be, so we let her be it. She wanted to be dopey. <laughs> of, all the, of all of them to choose, that's the one she chose. So we let her be that, and she wore a little shirt that said it, and it was sort of, it was cute. And then there was another one that was a movie theme, and so I had built um, movie, like film strip, along the truck i don't know and we there was a lot it was it's just a lot and we missouri yeah missouri the was the other place and it was so it's so hard and you have to make all these signs and then you have to make sure you you're thanking the sponsors of the um that's hosting the fair the the place where they had the campventions it was it was a lot of work so i don't know if they realize how much work it is well that was the little thing that I wanted to say before the phone rang and um, I guess I finished the story now so that's it now you'll see the goodbye I will put it in there somehow <laughs> I don't know how but if I don't get it in there very good I'll say goodbye now bye well that's it
I guess I can hang up the phone and I'm going to say goodbye to you too at the same time. So you have a great day and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.